What is up YouTube? Welcome to the video today. We're gonna have a lot of fun by playing around with some of the cool color effects that Photoshop has available to us, which means we're gonna be turning this image into this and that. And I'm gonna show you step by step and it'll get a little bit harder each time and so you'll get to learn more and grow in your proficiency. It's awesome. The beginning of each video, I like to give an encouragement of some kind. Uh, I don't like to just jump in. I wanna have something that encourages you as a person before I help teach you as a designer. Uh, if you don't like that, then you can just skip ahead on the little timeline thing. But for today, my encouragement is very simple. I would just encourage all of us to take a moment to breathe. I don't know about you, but oftentimes for me, I can just get in the rat race of things. I just move so fast and there's like one thing to the next, the next. And sometimes we just need a minute to pause and breathe and remember that the world will not fall apart if we take a few minutes to rest. So that's my encouragement to you. Now that we're all zenned out, ready to do some designing, let's jump into the video. Here we go. We're here in Adobe Photoshop and I'm gonna be showing you how to take this awesome image and we're gonna be changing the color. Uh, it's pretty monochromatic right now. I got this image off Unsplash, highly recommend. I'll put the link in the bio if you'd like to download this image and follow along with me. But whenever you open the image in Photoshop, we're gonna have our layer that is locked by default because it's a PNG right now, or a JPEG rather. So I'm gonna make a new layer. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to go down here to my adjustment layers and I'm going to click Hue Saturation. So this first part is super easy. I actually did not need that first layer, my bad. Um, so when I select this layer, I'll have these options up here in my properties panel. If you don't see properties, go to window and then find properties. It'll open up for you. Now what I can do, this is literally so easy as this. I just take my hue and I can change it. Wow. Looky there. Some of them look a little rough. Another thing we can do is we can adjust the saturation really saturated, or maybe tone it down a little bit for the green. That looks a little bit better. I like that. Um, and then I can also adjust my lightness. Typically I would leave the lightness alone cause that's gonna mess with your contrast and it usually does not work as good. So keep that at zero. So that's one way to do it. We can just adjust our hue. Uh, I'm gonna make a copy of this by clicking Command J. I'll actually delete these, uh, those little masks and we'll turn it off for now. Another way we can do this, I just wanna keep these separate is where I can click colorize and colorize is gonna let us actually pick by hand which color we want. So I could go up to kind of purple I could increase my saturation or I could go back to green and I could change my saturation. And this one, again, we're keeping away from our lightness because that's just going to mess you up. Okay, so those are two simple ways. I'm going to go back to my other one because I really like that kind of teal blue color that I found. So this is our first, our first test is how to create this, but to do something different for the background. So originally, remember, our background was yellow. What I can do, well, let's just start with getting it to where the background is yellow and the phone is this color. So I'm gonna make a copy of the background layer by clicking Command J, that makes a duplicate, and we'll call this phone or fine, but probably phone. Uh, now I can take my W tool, which is my magic wand, and instead of actually clicking and trying to select these areas, that would take a long time, we are just going to click Select Subject. Now Photoshop has done its best to figure out what in this image is the subject and what I wanna keep. It's not perfect though, so we're gonna help it out by clicking select and mask at the top. Masking in Photoshop is a really important thing to learn. And so that's why I wanna spend a little time showing you how to do this. So right now I see that these parts in the middle, those are part of the phone, I wanna keep them. On my left side, I can change to my brush tool. Uh, right now it's pretty small, I can increase the size. A shortcut for doing this is holding control. Whoa, what are we doing here? Okay holding control and option on the Mac. And then you can just click and drag left and right changes your size and up and down changes the hardness of your brush. It's a really good trick to know. All right, so I'm gonna just color this in and the red is the part that's gonna be removed. So since I want it to stay, I just colored that in there. Another thing I noticed is right down here, it looks like our bottom of our foot is messing up a little bit. So I can either come in, I'm gonna turn my hardness down. I can come in with this brush and I can try to, you know, get an approximately what it's like. It's not working too well, so instead what I can do is my quick selection tool, select that area, and then Photoshop's gonna try to figure out what belongs there and what doesn't. It doesn't always do a great job, but it's decent. Um, for now, what we're gonna do is instead of trying to go through, you can see our cord here, this isn't exactly right. We've got some parts sticking in. 
what we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna adjust the overall settings for our selection before we start going into the details. So over here, I have the option to smooth my selection. I'm gonna smooth it down a little bit. That makes everything a little bit smoother, less jagged. Feathering is gonna blur the outside. If I turn it way up, you'll see that it's blurred a lot. We don't want that very high. Maybe like just a little bit of feather can be nice so it's not as harsh. Um, let's see how that looks. That looks okay. And then contrast. So this is gonna make sure, make it to where things are a little bit sharper of lines. I can turn on my contrast. A lot of these things are subtle. You're not gonna see them so clearly on my computer, but on yours, you should be able to. And then shift edge, this is really important. If your shift edge is negative, it's gonna kind of scrunch in your selection. And if it's positive, it's gonna kind of pull out your selection a little bit. I want it to scrunch in just a little bit. Okay, it looks pretty good. And then my edge detection, I'll adjust this a little bit as well. These are kind of settings that honestly, I would just play around with until your selection looks right. You can see as I'm adjusting my edge settings, it is kind of adjusting right here. Um, the under, my mouse is vanishing, that's kind of weird. It's very strange. But anyway, if you look at my my cord there, it's getting the bottom, but also the top is getting is getting uh, taken out a little bit. So I kind of want to just adjust these back and forth until I get the best looking selection. Okay, that's pretty solid. I still need to refine over here these guys just a little bit. We should be able to use our quick selection tool. I'm going to hold Option, and that is going to make it to where it's reversing out. Whoa, what have we done? You guys, this is a really great tool, but often it moves pretty slow, um, unless you've got like a super high powered computer, but I'm sh filming and doing Photoshop things, so it's not happy with me. But um, what I can do is I can just try to click through these areas by dragging over them, and it should, God willing, adjust my selection. Wow, this is going really poorly. <laughs> I'm gonna keep tweaking at it. Give me just a second, don't be impatient. Just, I'll speed it up. Oh my God, what's happening? What is happening? Okay, here we are, we're back. I did it, I did it, we're, we're done. You know, I don't know if you guys have like a dog and you teach your dog how to like roll over or sit and then your neighbor comes over and you're like, check it out, my dog can sit, they learned. And then you tell them to sit and they just stare at you or like just slobber. Photoshop just did that to me, Photoshop was my bad dog. So I'm a cat person. Um, actually, I had a dream last night that my cat could speak English and then I had to film it so that everyone would believe me. Anyway, um, Photoshop, so we, I finished cleaning up the selection. Basically what I did is I just took the brush and I just used the add and remove and I added some and then removed some and I kind of did it till I got my cord looking just right. This has been longer than I expected. We're gonna click okay and be done with it. Okay, so now what Photoshop has done is it selected just the shape that I created in my select and mask. So now what I need to do is I need to separate this from the background. So a few different ways to do this. There's actually like 10 ways to do this. We're gonna do the simplest one, which is just to mask it. So when I have that layer mat uh, selected, I'm gonna click my masking button down here at the bottom and boom, nothing happened. So you thought. So what I can do is if I change the arrangement of my layers here, this will kind of do the opposite of what I was saying, but if I bring my hue and saturation below, now the saturation is only affecting what's beneath it, which is the background, and it's not affecting the phone, which is on top. So that's pretty cool. Um, so now we have our phone and our background different color, which I really like. I might flip these two, and the way I can flip these two is basically the same thing. I just am going to invert this mask. There you go. I really like it. So what I wanna do now is slightly more complicated, but I think it's something that you'll really enjoy. Let's, let's try this. I'm gonna go back a little bit. I'm gonna readjust all this. Okay, we're gonna turn off our background. We're gonna have one of these guys that has no layer mask. We'll disable it. And then we're going to use our hue saturation and we're gonna do something called a clipping mask. Very helpful. Hold option on your computer, put your mouse right in between these two lines and click. And this means whatever this layer is, it's only going to affect whatever the bottom layer is. It's gonna basically be like put inside of it, like a funnel. And so now I have exactly what I wanted here. This looks really good. I'm gonna do one more thing. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna duplicate my phone. I'm gonna bring this other one up here to the top. Don't worry, it messed me up for a minute, but we're okay. 
So what I want to do is I want to change, maybe I just want to change this chord to, I don't know, red or something like that. I can do that relatively easily. There's again, lots of ways to do these things. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer, shift command N, or you can click this little new layer button down here, click enter. And now I'm going to use the pen tool P. Most people are scared of the pen tool, rightly so, because it can be tricky to use, but don't worry. I'm going to show you. It's not that hard. We're going to set our fill to none and our stroke to just something doesn't matter what color, whatever you can see. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to draw a line out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm just going to roughly outline my uh, chord here. And basically, I just want to separate this part where it's going into the phone from uh, the chord where it's coming out. So I'm just kind of dragging whatever looks right. It does not have to be perfect. Just close. OK, now I'm going to go down here a little bit. And now I need to isolate this part as well. So I'll click here as close as I can to that starting point. I'm going to draw a little curve. Here's a trick if we're switching up our angle. I can hold option and then just drag that anchor point. There you go. Same thing again, option, we're gonna drag the anchor point. Then I'm going to use my pen tool right down here. And then, boom. Okay, so basically I wanna surround this whole shape, right? So that looks pretty good. We're gonna hide that for now because we're actually just creating it to use it as a selection. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come up here, I'm gonna alt drag, which makes a duplicate, my hue saturation. I'm gonna put it into this phone. I'm gonna rename these so it's easy to see. This is our phone, um, this is our background, and then this is gonna be our chord. Okay, so if I wanna change the color of the chord, what I'm gonna do first is my, I need to adjust my mask here. This is what's happening in my mask. So anything that is white is visible on this layer and anything that's black is not visible. So basically just what I need to do is make sure that everything that's not my chord is black. So an easy way to do that is to hold command and click our shape like little icon area right here. And that's gonna select that uh, shape that I just drew. So now basically I need to know that that needs to stay white but everything outside of that can be black. So what I can do is a few little shortcuts here, shift command I, that inverts my selection so it flips it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do edit fill with my foreground color, which is right over here, the one on top. Click OK. And I may need to make sure I'm actually selecting on the layer here that has the uh, mask and I'm in the mask. I'm not clicking on the shape or the, the picture itself. I can deselect command D and then I'm going to click out and that should show me my effect. Nothing is happening right now, but that's because we haven't changed my hue and saturation setting here. I'm going to use colorize like I showed you earlier. And now I have it set as red. I can turn up my saturation. Oh, that looks really cool. I can adjust the hue a little bit if I want. Really, I can make it any color, but I really like that red. And the same thing too, I could change the phone color. You know, you can mask out different parts of this, but I really like this. I think this is kind of a groovy color palette. And at this point, we can delete that shape layer because we don't need it anymore. So that is a really simple way how you can change colors for different objects using layer effects in Adobe Photoshop. And I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, if you liked it, leave a comment so I can know that you liked it or you can like it. it just helps me to know what people like and what they don't like. I'm like making this over my lunch break and I could be eating. So help me not waste my time. But Hope you have a great day. Hope you feel encouraged. Remember, just breathe. The world is going to go on just fine without you if you pause for a few minutes to take care of you. All right, that's all I have. Love you all. See you soon.